This video is sponsored by Master 3D with Professor. We'll talk more about this best-rated 3D animation course later in this video. In today's video, with the help of 3D animation, we'll learn how do trains change tracks. We'll start this video from the very basics, assuming that you only know this, then this, and then this regarding the train tracks. But apart from this, while traveling on the train, you remain highly excited to learn how trains change tracks. You very well know that this is a train engine, and the system on which the train engine is established is called bogey. There are a total of six wheels connected to the bogey. Nothing is more imperative than this railway train wheel. In this complete video, if you can understand the wheel's design, you will quickly understand how do trains change tracks. This part of the train wheel, which is a bit larger than the rest of the body and is located on the inner side of the track, is called flange, and the shape of the train wheel is called outward conical shape. That is, in the direction of going away from the track. You'll notice the wheel getting smaller, so now the role of the flange is to help in track change, and the role of the outward conical shape is to prevent trains from slipping off the tracks. Let's understand how. In the front of the loco pilot, this steering wheel inside the train engine confuses almost all folks. People believe this steering wheel is responsible for train track change, but that's completely untrue. This steering is an accelerator and is used to increase the speed of the train. Now focus. By circulating the steering wheel, you deliver it a moment to the train, and because of this, these wheels will keep moving forward. Finally, these wheels have arrived where they're supposed to change the tracks. Now forget about these wheels for a moment, and focus here. This system where trains happen to change the tracks is called the point. This machine beside the point is called the point machine. This point machine is responsible for the moment of these closure rails. First, if the train is supposed to go right, this point machine will push the closure rails. Following this, the front portion of these closure rails, called point blades, will fit inside the tracks on the left side, and stay away from the tracks on the right side. Remember? I explained the role of the flange is to grip the wheels with tracks from inside. Now, as soon as the wheels reach the point, see how, with the help of flange, the wheels kept going in the right direction because this flange is on the inner side of the wheels. This left wheel is explicitly moving like this. But if the train is supposed to keep moving on the tracks on which it already is moving, then point machine will pull the closure rails towards themselves. Following this, these point blades will fit inside the tracks on the right side and move away from the tracks on the left side. Now, as soon as the wheels approach the point, the left wheel will keep moving through the gap, but the right wheel will grip the track from the inside, and the train will keep moving on the tracks on which it already was moving. If we move forward, this part is called the frog, and the rails which are being continued here are called the frog rails. The role of frog rails is to give continuity to the train wheels. Thus, as soon as the train changes the track, it will approach the frog rails, and further, these frog rails will provide a way to the train wheels somewhat like this. Finally, you've already learned how trains change tracks, but still, one fundamental question has remained unanswered. Guess what? The question is, who controls the point machine? Who decides whether the point machine will push or pull the closure rails? Before answering this question, here's a quick reminder. To date, thousands of people have asked me, how do you create these 3D animated videos? But at the same time, I was utterly shocked to see that more than 90% of you people are highly interested to learn 3D animation. Personally, from me. 
and to teach you how to easily create 3D videos like Professor of How YouTube channel, I have created an English version of this course as well. We will talk about the launch date and price of the course at the end of this video. Anyways, if we talk about who controls the point machine, first of all, make sure you understand that there wasn't any point machine a few years ago. There used to be levers instead. A person called pointsman used to remain on duty to operate these levers successfully. The problem with this system was, in the absence of pointsmen, anyone could damage the lever system, resulting in a train tragedy. Following this, these levers were further locomoted from here in the open ground to inside the cabins. You must have seen these buildings at the beginning and the end of the railway station. These buildings are called the cabins. For many years, levers were operated from inside the cabins only, but these cabins also became unproductive with the passage of time and technological advancements. If talking about the present condition of the point machine in the Indian Railways, an exciting example would be the best fit to explain the train track concept. Since I live in Jaipur, a city in India, let me explain with an example of this city only. These are the stations in Jaipur city. Baisgodam, Durkapura, Gandhi Nagar, Jagatpura, Jaipur Junction, and Kanakpura. Now, these six railway stations combine to form a section, and the person who controls this whole section is called the section controller in Indian railways. Similarly, someone is needed to control the whole railway station. The person who controls the railway station in India is called station master. Now, the role of the section controller is to decide which train will approach which tracks and proceed in which direction. As soon as the section controller takes the final decision, he's accountable for notifying the station master that Professor of How Express is supposed to move in the right direction. Now, as soon as the station master presses this button in the station master panel, Point Machine will receive the signal that the closure railways are supposed to be pushed. As soon as the closure rails are pushed, train will proceed on the tracks in a suitable diversion. Now, let me tell you a fact. The salary of the station master is almost twice the salary of the pointsman, and the salary of the section controller is even more than the salary of the station master. So have you ever wondered why it is that? You might have seen thousands of such real-life examples, like Sonu and Shubham. After studying and taking a degree from the same college, one of them is paid more than $1,500 per month. But at the same time, the other one is struggling with the data entry job of $200 per month. In both these cases, what do you think could be the difference? There is only one difference. I repeat, the only difference in both these cases is of skills. The era of jobs based on degrees is almost gone, and instead now is the era of better skills, more money. That's why to boost your skills after investing thousands of hours, keeping in mind this step-by-step -step tutorial system, with my own hands, my brain, and lots of love, I have created a 3D animation course for you called Master 3D with Professor. Once in a lifetime admission fees for the same will be sent to your email shortly. Thus, visit brainrig.com and subscribe to my promising newsletter. With a whopping 70% early birds discount, this animation program will be launched on the 1st of July, 2022. Use the links in the pinned comment and description. No spam guaranteed, and thanks for watching this video.